At the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February, it had an overwhelming force. Analysts said that it was the biggest force that it had mobilised since the Second World War. The way that the Russians conducted the first initial stage of the invasion was straight out of the Russian playbook, with Russian troops invading the country from the land, sea and air, from the north, the east and the south, and they hit targets simultaneously. The Ukrainians were outgunned and outmatched from the very beginning. The Russian army is around 900,000 strong, and this compared to the Ukrainian force, which is a lot smaller, of around 200,000 troops. The Russians aimed to take out Ukraine's command and control systems, as well as air defence systems, and so they targeted key military sites in places like Kyiv, the capital, and also Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. In the first few hours of the invasion, the Russians used a lot of Iskander missiles, and they continued to use those missiles throughout the invasion. The Iskander short-range ballistic missiles have a payload of 1,500 pounds, with a high explosive warhead. They can also be outfitted with cluster munitions and nuclear warheads. The missile is designed to surprise missile defences by flying on a low trajectory and manoeuvring in flight to strike targets. Both the Pentagon and the Ukrainian military has said that the Russians were running out of precision weapons, such as the Iskander missiles. As a result, they're turning to more unguided systems. The Fab 500 is a high explosive bomb that is designed to destroy military industrial facilities, railway junctions, light armoured targets, as well as military field fortifications. A lot of people would say that Russia isn't too bothered about hitting civilian targets, as we've seen in previous conflicts, such as during the Syrian civil war. During the Ukrainian invasion, there have been lots of instances of unguided bombs falling on civilians and homes and other infrastructures such as hospitals during the war. One of the most feared weapons that Russia has and has been using on the battlefield in Ukraine is the thermobaric weapon. These are known as vacuum bombs and they suck in oxygen from the air. Thermobaric rockets are fired from the TOS-1 Alpha multiple launch rocket system mounted on the chassis of a T-72 tank. It is nicknamed the Buratino, the Russian version of Pinocchio for its big nose. It can launch 24 rockets in six seconds and the unguided rockets have a two-mile range. So what about the weapons Ukraine is using? The Russians deployed a large amount of tanks into Ukraine, and we've seen a lot of footage in the last few weeks of Ukrainian assets taking out these tanks. Some analysts have told me that this might show that actually tanks are obsolete in modern conflict. However, British military sources have been telling me that tanks are still useful, but they need to be used properly. The British Enlaw system is one of the Ukrainians' favourite tools. They're extremely happy with the gifting of these weapons from the British. The unjammable Enlaws was used against the Taliban in Afghanistan. It is lighter than the Javelin anti-tank missiles and it can be fired in confined spaces. It's a shoulder-carried missile launcher capable of taking out a tank with one shot. It has a range of up to 800 metres and can be deployed in around five seconds by a single soldier at any time of the day. Like the Enlaws, the Javelins aim to fire at the tank where it's weakest. Javelin is a lightweight, man-portable, shoulder-fired, fire-and-forget system. It automatically guides itself to the target after launch, allowing the gunner to take cover and avoid counterfire. Soldiers or Marines can reposition immediately after firing or reload to engage another threat. Using an arched top attack profile, Javelin climbs above its target for improved visibility and then strikes where the armour is weakest. The TB2 drones have a 12 metre wingspan, which allows them to remain in the sky for up to 30 hours at a time. Each drone can carry four laser guided missiles. They are capable of inflicting disproportionate damage on enemy hardware and are far cheaper than other drones. The TB2 drones have been used to fire at surface-to-air missile systems and tanks. They are small and lightweight, and there's been footage showing these drones taking out Russian tanks, other vehicles, and Russian fuel depots, as well as surface-to-air missile systems. The Ukrainians have managed to use these weapons extremely skillfully. 
For example, they've used drones and also the anti-tank weapons to ambush convoys using guerrilla-style tactics to kill the Russians. The Ukrainians have had help from the British and Americans again. So, for example, from the Americans, they've had Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. And from the Brits, they've recently been given Starstreak, another anti-aircraft system. Footage that's been shown recently showed Starstreak being deployed successfully against a Russian helicopter. Starstreak, a high-velocity weapon, causes catastrophic damage to low-flying fighter jets and helicopters. It uses a system of three dart-like projectiles, allowing multiple hits on the target. It's been described as very lethal because it works by the operator pointing a laser at a target. The missile flies along the laser beam, and as long as the operator keeps pointing the laser at the target's aircraft, there is nothing the pilot can do. It's also very fast, which gives the pilot very little time to react. The Stinger missile is a lightweight, self-contained air defence system that can be rapidly deployed by ground troops. It's highly accurate because it uses an infrared seeker to lock onto the heat in the engine's exhaust and will hit nearly anything flying below 11,000 feet. Russia never expected to come up against such fierce Ukrainian resistance and they could also never have predicted the amount of weaponry that would be sent to Ukraine from Britain and America and other European allies. And that weaponry has continued to flood into the country and the Ukrainians have been able to use it very skillfully. However, Ukraine warned that although it was making significant gains on the ground, it would not be able to defeat the Russians without more aircraft and other missile defense systems, which would enable it to take down Russian aircraft and helicopters. Without more sophisticated weapons, they will ultimately be unable to win the war against Russia.